To finish off section 10.5, I want us to go through a proof of the ratio test. So we're assuming that the falling limit exists for our series here. Um, and so there's three cases. If rho is less than 1, the series converges absolutely. If rho is strictly greater than 1, the series diverges. If rho is equal to 1, the test is inconclusive. Uh, we already know, we, we saw the example previously of two different series that have rho is equal to 1, we, and one of them converges, one of them diverges. So that takes care of this last case. So the things we have to prove are these two cases. That rho is, is less than 1, then our series converges absolutely. If rho is strictly bigger than 1, our series diverges. So, so how do we do this? So, so let's take care, this is two cases. Let's start off with supposing that rho is strictly less than 1. So if rho is strictly less than 1, that's like rho is equal to 0.98, we can choose uh, r such that r is strictly between rho and 1. So if rho is 0.98, we can choose r to be 0.99, that's between 0.98 and 1. If rho is 0.99999, uh, we can choose R to be 0.9999999. That's going to be between rho and 1. So what, what do we do this? Uh, why do we do this? Because the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of the absolute value a, a, n plus 1 to a n is equal to rho. Uh, by pro, by like the formal definition of the limit... Back in Calc 1, we know there is some cutoff value big M such that the absolute value of a n plus 1 divided by a n is less than r for all n strictly bigger than m. Uh, or rearranging this, a sub n plus 1 is less than r times a sub n. I'm being a little bit lazy. I'm not saying the absolute values there, but I'm writing them. Okay, so if n, n is bigger than this cutoff value big M, well, a sub big M plus 1 is less than r times a sub big M. a sub big M plus 2 is less than r times a sub big M plus 1, but that's less than r squared times the absolute value a sub big M plus Oops, just, sorry, that should just be a sub big M. And so in general, a sub big M plus N is less than R to the N times a sub big M. So this allows us, if we use this fact, this allows us to observe that the sum from N from M to infinity, the absolute value of a sub N, is less than or equal to after doing some re-indexing, the sum from n from 0 to infinity of a sub big M, the absolute value of that times r to the n. But, but this a sub big M, that's a constant, so we can move it outside of the sum. And r, by assumption, r is something that is strictly less than 1. So this whole thing, this converges, and so by the direct comparison test, this converges. And so, uh, so our original series, the, our, our series here is going to be a sum from, let's say, n from 0 to infinity of a sub n is equal to the sum from n from 0 to big M minus 1 of a sub n plus the sum from n from big M to infinity of a sub n. So because this here converges, the terms of absolute value, this absolutely converges. And this is just a finite thing. So this whole sum is also going to absolutely converge. So that takes care of one case here. This shows us that if rho is less than 1, this work followed by this work, comparing, uh, comparing this to a geometric series, 
and then using the, the direct comparison test and concluding that our series absolutely converge. That's how we take care of the first case here in the ratio test. Okay, so we've taken care of this case, we've taken care of this case. So the last thing for us to think about is what is happens if rho is strictly bigger than one. So now we're going to do a similar trick. trick. Uh, we're going to choose r such that r is be still between one and rho. Let me make that a little bit more rho-like there. But now rho is bigger than one, so r is going to be bigger than one as well. By a similar argument, we know there is some cutoff value big M such that uh, if little n is bigger than big M, the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 divided by a n is bigger than r. And so by similar calculations as before, we end up with the limit, uh, sorry, a sub big N plus N is strictly bigger than R to the N times A sub M. And the last thing to observe here is that this is going to tell us the limit as N goes to infinity of A sub big N plus N, this is not zero. So, so what, what, what's basically going on here in the ratio test, this is a fancy way of saying here that these terms, the a sub n's, are going to get larger and larger and larger in absolute value, and we can lower bound just how big they're getting by some geometric series that's going off to, sorry, some geometric sequence that's going off to infinity. And so this is basically using the nth term divergence test. So that's a sketch of what's, what's going on. You can take a look in the book if you want a more formal a uh, statement of a, a more a little bit more formal statement of the ratio test. Uh, we d we also in the section we did not do a proof of the root test. Uh, I'll just say that if you want to prove the root test, you prove it also in a similar way by comparing to some geometric series. Okay, so that wraps up section ten point five.